Welcome to the MRX Influencers Podcast, where you come for the insights, but stay for the good times. I'm Dan Fleetwood, and on this podcast, I chat with the best and brightest minds in the research space. On this episode, I chat with Sonia Lucina, who is a president of Workforce here at Question Pro. We chat about culture, employee experience, and empathy, especially as employees were heading back to the workplace. Now, this conversation took place at the end of 2020, heading into 2021. However, I believe it's still extremely relevant today, and I know you'll enjoy the conversation that I had with Sonia. Hey, Sonia, welcome. Hello. I had so many comments on what you were talking about, and I was behind the scenes, and I was like, but you... (laughs) (laughs) No, no, what 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 do you have to say? Feel free to add something here. No, it's really interesting. I mean, I agree with everything you two are saying, and it's so much around the purpose of why you're collecting data. So here it's clearly to create promoters and to create brand ambassadors and for somebody to tell a really good story. Right. Or if you're looking to collect data around what do you improve, you do it in a very different way, right? It's not a tell us you're amazing. So sometimes it's around clarity on that, but people don't really get it. So imagine how horrible it is if you had a really bad experience and then you get that and it's like, oh, tell us, you know, tell everyone you think we're amazing. It's like, but I don't. <laughs> right, right. I know. And then <laughs> and then probably there's like bonuses and things based on, you know, some of these ratings. So you got to watch yeah. out. You got to watch out. Yeah. Welcome to the live show today and welcome to Question Pro. We're excited to have you on both, you know, both here and at Question Pro. So. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. And I think I'm excited, equally excited to be in both. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <and Western. laughs> no, I think that's great. So Sonia joined as the uh, president of Workforce. So she'll be leading up that business. Um, and really, you know, Sonia, I would say that you're probably the best case study that we have because you were a client and now you're working for us. So there's no better case study, right? So maybe share a little bit about that and then we can dive into uh, work, workplace happiness, culture, and, and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. So you can imagine that in as insane of a year as this year has been, um, when a lot of my network learned that I was changing jobs, they were like, really? Now? You're, do- you're doing this? <laughs> you know, 2020. <laughs> like, what are you signing up for? Um, and for me, like you mentioned, I've, I've known our CEO, Vivek, for the last... I finally did the calculation 12 years. Okay. Wow. And have been, for a majority of that part, have been on the customer end and have really collaborated with him and grown a business unit where we had these incredible conversations with candidates and employees at scale and... 12 years ago, it was, you know, just the beginning of creating online portals and really looking at real-time data. And he was just an incredible partner to me in that endeavor. Mm. And so fast forward a little bit over a decade and everything that's that's happening in the world today, just the idea of having the ability to have conversations with people at scale was something that when I woke up in the morning and thought about that really energized me because right. you were mentioning before a little bit, you know, what's going to happen this year and what it, none of us know. You mm-hmm. know, you look at headlines and you look at these incredible researchers saying people will work from home forever. And then you look at other incredible researchers saying, but they're all these psychological and physical negative impacts and what do mm-hmm. you do? Um, and so to me, being able to come here and join and be a driving force and a part of that equation for us to say, we have this incredible canvas to paint in the next year to be able to participate and really define in how we want to work moving ahead and be able Mm -hmm. to have conversations with millions of people to understand what it is they want and how their ideas and needs are changing. Yeah, yeah. It just made me have to do it. So again, yeah. I'm still all smiles, <laughs> so energized. No, that's good. Um, and that's, that's something that I wanted to ask you about too is, you know, the pandemic has shifted a lot of, you know, workplace culture and where we're working, how people are working. I know Question Pro has gone, you know, fully remote. Obviously, you're in, you know, Argentina, yeah. right? So there's there's that aspect. But <laughs> how do we measure or how, how do we sort of calculate what impact all this work from home or work from anywhere has or, you know, how is it positive? Is it negative? What are some ways that we'll be doing that? I'm sure going into 2021, it'll be a key component. It's going to be such a key component. So I would say in in research, one of the things that we've seen is that initially there was a hit in productivity because a lot of organizations were not prepared to work remotely. Mm -hmm. They just weren't. They weren't um, a technology company or a digital company. And so a lot of technologies that companies like R might have in place to communicate, a lot of companies didn't. 
And so they had to create that shift to say, how do we have a meeting if we're used to all sitting in the same room? Right, and how right. do we most effectively message if we're used to just getting up and talking to somebody on the other side of the floor? Mm-hmm. And so there was an initial hit, but it bounced back. Once the technology were put in place, we see a lot of research saying that people are being productive again. And in some cases, they feel more productive because they've gotten some of their commute back in the day, they can arrange their time differently. And so we're not seeing a big hit on that. But where we are, there are a couple of different things I think that we're seeing is that one has been the impact of managers. Mm. And I think a really positive finding from last year is that I would say surprisingly many people said that they felt supported effectively by their managers. The managers really stepped up and they were... And one of the biggest things that people needed that was different than before was empathy. That's not easy. Being mm-hmm. empathetic, being vulnerable. It's not something they teach us in school. And it's not yeah. something that's necessarily always required of a leader, but it really became a crucial thing that people were saying this year. And so mm-hmm. that was really positive to say people were able to really step up when you were asking employees about their leaders. And then you asked the leaders... And they were saying, I'm so stressed out. I don't know how to continue being effective without micromanaging. I don't know how to manage my time well. I don't know how to continue to give the people what they exactly need, what it is they need. How do I continue to understand that and understand that it's scale? Mm -hmm. And what's actually been really interesting, I would say, um, in the recent weeks, we've seen in our business this huge uptick of companies coming to us and asking how do we better support our managers? Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the more specific questions has been around 360s and saying, how do we understand what's holistically going on? How are they supporting their teams? But also, how are they collaborating with their peers? How are they working with their leaders? And do they feel like they're giving enough transparency and information? Um, so there is a lot, I think, to be done around leadership to be able to understand how do we continue to support them in the most effective way? And I think 2020 was a lot around technology and putting some of those different things in place um, around communications and collaboration. But now it's shifting its head and saying, how do we emotionally support you? How do we support you from a wellness standpoint? And also just understanding what the world of work is going to look like. Do we want to work from home? Do they not? (laughs) And also allowing that for that to change. So anyways, I'm going to pause because as you can see, I've been thinking about this a lot. (laughs) No, that's good. You have, a lot of, of you have a lot of yeah. <laughs> well, you have a lot of good thoughts and insights. And as I was hearing you talk, I thought you know empathy was a big thing. But I think one thing that's hard is empathy and like a to go along with uncertainty is a difficult thing, right? Because you have to be empathetic, but you, there's all this uncertainty. You don't know when things are going to end, and so I think it requires a you know a, a big change there. So that, that's interesting. Uh, how does this you know this new work culture? you know, I'll work from anywhere or as people start to go back into the office, what impact does this have on like equality and inclusion? And what, what I know that you're big, this is a big topic <laughs> for you and sort of your passion. So I was curious to get, to get your thoughts on that. Does it help it? Does it hurt it? What, where do you stand on that? That's such a good so, question. Again. <laughs> I'm going to go with help it because you know, I'm an eternal optimist. I'm going yeah. to go with, it has a tremendous opportunity to help it. It will not happen by itself. Mm-hmm. And so today, when we're understanding these different changes, and I think one of the reasons why I hope it's really going to help is because people have experienced things. And I think all of us in our lives would say, I would never do that, or I would never act like this. And then all of a sudden, you find yourself in a situation you're like, oh, no, I just did the thing I said I would never do. And what that does, I think it opens up people's minds to be more understanding of people of different backgrounds. And it doesn't have to just be gender. It doesn't have to just be race. It's socioeconomic status. It's where you grew up, where you lived, what country you were in, what were you exposed to, your education, all... There's so many different factors. And I think because a lot of people were shaken up and had to deal with things they didn't that they would need to deal with before. And some Mm -hmm. things they felt with dealt with really effectively, others they didn't. That it creates a more that it creates more open mindedness. Right. Now, what we need to do that as a society is I don't think that every single individual has the information, the training, the knowledge of what do I do with that next. And so, as organizations, as we think about that, that is why it's incredibly important for us to continue to measure for different individuals how much they feel included in an organization, their sense of belonging. And when there are opportunities to improve that, 
to understand what kind of opportunity is which group and with which group and how do we then have those more in-depth conversations and i say that because being a psychologist one of the threats we often have and especially when we have the best intentions and heart, and sometimes that that's even more dangerous in a way, is that we have a certain mindset. And because of what we've experienced, we feel mm-hmm. like if we remove that roadblock in our organization, it's going to help everyone. Because right. if it's such a challenge, to me, it must be a challenge to everybody else, but it's not. And that's mm-hmm. what we found a lot in research this year as we were trying to understand how people were adjusting, that people had very different challenges. Now, there was oftentimes particularly to remote work, but applies to everything else. And so I I hope we really take this opportunity to continue at a larger scale, have conversations with people to understand how do you feel in this organization? What are you looking for? What are your aspirations? How can we do that better? And then continue to check in with them to make sure that the things that we're doing Mm -hmm. are actually effective. But it's almost impossible without asking somebody for their input to really, truly understand um, not only as a starting point, but as things continue to change. Because there are, right. without fail, going to be so many things that are going to change in 2021. So we need to keep that dialogue going. We need to keep the dialogue going at scale. And we need to keep it going on the individual level and all the way, <laughs> all the way in between. Yeah, no, I but think I'm optimistic. Yeah. I'm yeah. optimistic yeah. <laughs> that the end of 2021, we're going to look back and say, wow, what a year for inclusion and belonging. And I really am looking forward to all of us being a part of people that write that story. So right, we'll right, revisit right. this in, in a year. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. I think, you know, 2020 is like the year nobody expected, right? So I'm interested to see what's going to happen in 2021. Um, you know, kind of kind of moving on a little bit around, you know, every like the world is changing. Obviously, the where we're working from is changing. What? How do we, as like a, a like a survey insights, you know, platform provider, how do we keep up? Like, what are some of the plans that you have for for workforce? I know you're newly, you know, kind of newly in the role, but what sort of things are we do you foresee us implementing in 2021 to help us keep up with these changing times? Yeah, absolutely. So the things that I've been looking at very closely, am I? week two <laughs> for work <laughs> is um, really <laughs> is understanding that the employee life cycle, understanding that it's very much changing, but look, looking at all the different points where we can connect with people and how I think um, Paul surveys has been a buzz concept or a buzzword for, for a while, but I think there's a real opportunity to allow for that dialogue. And when we're talking about different needs of different individuals, starting to have much more targeted conversations, but also continuing to think about what are some of the key needs. So probably if you look at an employee experience or employee engagement survey from two years ago, mm-hmm. it was amazing two years ago, but it's not measuring the concepts that we that are the most prevalent today and the most right. have the most pressure. So to me, a part of my commitment is continue to stay the subject matter expert of what's going on around us and what is going on in the world of work, how is it evolving, and continuing to provide that in the form of whether it's questions or surveys or just collaborating with our clients on that because we don't know today what's going to be important for us to know in six months from now. But we'll learn that over time. So the more that we can communicate that at scale... And the more to me, I've always said that I'm really passionate about creating a community. And you mentioned mm-hmm. that I'm sitting in Buenos Aires, Argentina, which I am, and it's yeah. almost summer and I'm thrilled about that. Uh, but I've only lived here for the last five years and the rest of my life was spent in the US and in Europe. Right. So most of the people that I've worked with, that I love, that I admire are all over the world. And so for me, my commitment to myself as a professional, every single person I collaborate with, whether it's a client formally or whether it's just somebody who I, who I care about advancing their career and impacting the world to work with them, is to continue to have the dialogue with all these different individuals and continue to synthesize that and say, this is what we believe we need to know. Now, the thing is, it won't be the answer, is it'll be the questions. Like, what mm-hmm. do you need to be asking your people? And it's interesting because as you were showing that receipt, one of the things that I was thinking about too is even asking an employee, like, what's the worst thing that happened to you this month? Mm-hmm. What was the most challenging to deal with? Not 
on a scale of one to five, please rate right. how yeah. challenging these <laughs> things were. Oh, uh, you want to you <laughs> but... <laughs> like, humanize it. Okay, I get it. <laughs> exactly. Like open it up in such a sense to say, I know that everybody is having a challenge. What is your biggest one? And so you, you say it in such a way that you know they're comfortable. But the thing is, um, I would say, of course, healthcare workers, and I talk about them and I get goosebumps, um, are the person of the year, are the employees mm-hmm. of the year. But man, what HR has gone through, I can't even do that. I mean, right. I can. Right. And that's why that gives me goosebumps too. And so what I want is understanding this incredible pressure that they had, an incredible responsibility for all of their people to not only keep them healthy, mm-hmm. but keep them happy as much as possible and comfortable. It's important to help them know what's coming next. What do yeah. you anticipate? How do you ask the people? Because they can't be an expert in everything. They're already an expert in, in keeping their people in a good place. Um, so how do we help them with specific knowledge to continue to do their job really well? Like for the majority of part, they really have been in 2020. Right, right. No, I think I think that's a great point. It's like the healthcare workers are definitely important, but like you said, the HR, like think about like the HR at some of these hospitals and trying to keep them happy and staff, like, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, well, great. I think, you know, um, anything else that you want to add, Sonia? It's been wonderful right. interviewing you and getting to know and I think sharing a lot of things that I've heard you say you know, with, uh, with the audience here, but any final thoughts? Yeah, no, many, but I'll try to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to keep it short. Um, so I found myself, even as I, as I keep mentioning, I'm a rainbows and unicorns and an internal optimist kind of person. And I found myself mid this year doing some research and writing out actually a survey question that started, um, what are the most important things that make you happy at work? And I paused mm. And I said, can we ask people about happiness now? Are we in survival mode? Like, am I going to really feel like I'm out of touch if I ask somebody what makes them happy? And they're saying, well, what do you mean? Right. I don't have the luxury of being happy today. Mm-hmm. And so to me, my my hope for 2021 is that we are going to be able to swing back to looking for that happiness, that we're going to be able to swing back to helping people grow, to recreating a community that we all re-energize ourselves individually. Mm-hmm. And then we can really start to continue to, you know, what is next and think big more than survival mode. It's the reinvention, the energy, the thrive mode. Um, so I, I would encourage everybody, I know it's been an incredibly difficult year in a million different ways. Um, but as we're going into the holidays, many, many people haven't had the opportunity to think optimistically because we're just digging ourselves out of things every day, um, but to try to and to give themselves hope, um, to believe that we learned a lot as a society and as a humanity this year. And mm-hmm. just think about it. And the, the incredible thing is that every single person can make a difference. It doesn't matter what job you're in. It doesn't matter if you're a leader, if you're not a leader, being kind to others, understanding others, having conversations can have infinite impact. So just as as we're probably most of us going to have very unique holidays this year to try to find a little bit of time and think about what is it that I as a person want to accomplish? What are my hopes and dreams? And then how can I have some impact on others? So I will button it up yeah, there. No. I have <laughs> many more thoughts, but thank you so much for having me on today. I love chatting with you both. Um, it's just such an absolute pleasure to be part of the Question Pro family. And it was amazing spending some time with you and talking about things that I'm so passionate about today. So thank yeah, you no, your, your passion time. comes through the live stream. So we can definitely <laughs> see that. And we're, we're excited to have you as well. So welcome. And I know great things are in store for Workforce. So appreciate Whoa. your time. All right. Thanks so much for listening to the MRX Influencers Podcast. If you want more information about Question Pro, go to questionpro.com. If you want to follow me, feel free to do so on LinkedIn or Twitter. Until next time, we'll see you later.